Hey, what is up everyone? It is time for an Open That Book Rich video. I haven't done one in a little while. Um, I'm already just holding the camera because I know that um, trying to mount it um, and go through this book is going to be tricky. I mean, because we're going to just want to zoom in on stuff anyway. And uh, So yeah, if you've never watched one of these videos before and you're just coming to my channel fresh, um, I had a lot of books in my collection that I have not looked at in a long, long time. The rule for this is that it has to be a book that I haven't looked at in at least five years. Um, this book has been sitting around for a while, and this was one of my favorite books when I got it. This is by Koji Morimoto, and the book is Orange. Um, I believe that is how you say it. Uh, that was what I was originally told when I got it. Um, I think that the origin of this book for me was that I had bought it online probably about... 12 years ago, maybe longer. Um, someone at Wildstorm, I think, had picked it up, and I saw it there, and it was really cool, and it was kind of one of those must-have books. It really was a favorite book of mine at the time, um, but like all things, you know, you move on, you get into other stuff, and things get, you know, put on the shelf, and that's why we're doing Open That Book. I had too many cool books I wasn't looking at. I needed a reason, and the reason is you. So, all right, let's do this. So we're going to flip it over. I stabbed myself with a croquel this morning. Not even working. I was just cleaning up. And I slid my hand over um, an open drawer. And a Hunt 102 went right through my finger. It was lovely. So this is a very, very cool piece. Very cool. I digs it. <laughs> Little inset drawing. This. I'm gonna put that on the side. Right, I'm gonna pull the book off the dust jacket just so that we don't uh, have it. Yeah, Sky stuff is really cool. I mean, there was, uh, you know, I, I had no origin for the artist when I got it. Like a lot of these books um, that you'll see when I do these open that books. Um, you know, I didn't know much about the artist. Uh, you know, I, I really haven't looked him up since then. I believe he's like a designer. Uh, but anyway we should get moving through the book and look at the pretty pictures. So my recollection of this book is it had a little bit of a Jamie Hewlett feel, getting a little bit of a Mobius vibe, and I think he's got like some nice Atomoisms in his work also. I really, really like this book. I'm telling you, it was like one of those things where I was like, this is what I need to be doing more of. Um, you know, I was curious too to see this because it had been so long, how, how well it aged. If it, if it feels timeless, if it feels like it was, you know, a very 90s or early 2000s book. I'm trying to see if I can find a date here when this was released. So they quote Animatrix in 2003. So I'm guessing this book probably came out in 2004, 2005, which sounds about right. Like I said, oh, 2004. Okay, so perfect, yeah. So I've had it for about 12 or 13 years. It was pretty new when I got it. I have no idea if this book is hard to find right now or not. Um, hopefully not. Hopefully it's not too expensive. I mean, I assume when I originally got it, it was maybe like six bucks. Okay, so I'm going through this book backwards. I apologize, but it'll be easier for me to flip through um, it this way than the way that it probably was originally done. Um, this is an interesting photo, and I'll tell you why. There was an artist on conceptart.org when conceptart.org was, like, blowing up. What the hell was his name? He really, really shook people up over there. He did some cool stuff, but he would do a lot of like photography and um, like models and stuff on top of doing paintings. The dude was like out of this world, but uh, yeah, it, that kind of reminds me of something he would do. Um, man, it's really, really cool. It's unusual stuff. I, I think this will appeal to artists more than maybe like sort of like a traditional uh, comic fan, um, you know. It's like a lot of like kind of trippy ideas, um, but I'm digging it. I'm digging it already. A little negative of this drawing. I'll show you the drawing here. Da da da. I could see someone like Bengal being influenced by this, or or kind of coming from sort of the same source. There was a lot of a lot of this stuff going on in the early 2000s, 2005, um, when the internet was 
really starting to take off for artists and there was lots of forums and fun places to go and draw and show art and um, it was a little more um, it was a more more communal is that the right word um, I, I just I see so much like passive aggressive behavior online now it's very weird um, you know on top of all the trolls and whatnot <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, back then it was more fun. You'd have like one jerk. I said that I think in another video where it was like you'd have 500 cool people in like a group and there'd be kind of like one asshole that everyone sort of um, kind of kept control of and then they all got online. It's kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm excited to see this book. Dun, dun, dun. If you haven't checked out the Cannabis Works one, um, check that out because it's pretty cool. It's reminding me, man, that is a really nice shot. Cool lighting too, man. I love the sunlight like coming through in this this piece. It's really really neat. Very very creative. I believe this guy does like design now. Um, you know, I don't know if it's for video games or movies or what, but uh, I, I think I had caught wind that that's what he was up to, maybe for uh, uh, animation also. Um, but uh, yeah, for a long time, I really, really was kind of like always wondering, whatever happened to this guy? Where did he go? And uh, you know, it was it was one of those things. I got my finger all bandaged up from the <laughs> the crow quill stab. Um, because what's great is when you stab yourself with a crow quill, not only do you cut yourself, and but you uh, tattoo yourself because generally there's there's ink on it or even old ink. Um, this is the cover. My arm is already getting tired. Uh, okay. So this was the little interior uh, gatefold thing. What's nice about this stuff is it just it doesn't look. I mean, it, it's detailed. It's got everything that you would want, but it seems pretty natural. Like like. Uh, he makes it look fairly effortless, like he's just having fun and drawing, which is always really cool to see. Oh yeah, here's some of that weird photography. God, what was that guy's name on concept art? It was like, oh, Wanimal. W-A-N-I-M-A-L, I think was his name. But yeah, he would post some crazy shit. She's seen frog's legs, or a frog. This is crazy. All right, let's move on. We're about the drawings, not like freaky stuff. Although freaky sometimes is good. This is nice. Really cool colors. It's different. He has a very unique palette onto himself. Yeah, if he, if anyone knows, if he has another uh, art book out, I would definitely pick it up. Oh yeah, I love these. This stuff is cool. Wow. Yeah. You know what? That's funny. This was some of my favorite stuff. I don't know what it was. Probably because it looked cool. <laughs> I could see like a little Robert Valley in this. I'm sure it's just a coincidence, but if you don't know Robert Valley stuff, he's another guy I would definitely um, check out. You know what happens is there's just movements in art. You know, it's not so much that these guys are probably influenced by each other, although they might. There might be a little crossover and stuff like that, but it's just stuff hits and people are interested in it, and then they explore it, and and you kind of have these movements with art where, yeah, that's nice. This is cool too. Really good position in the frame of where he is. And I like the tilt of the head and body. This is nice too. See, I don't steer you guys wrong. I always try to get like good books for these. Open that book. That's pretty cool too. Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna have to hustle. Okay, here's so, this looks like something from an animation. So maybe he worked on this. Dun, dun, dun. You definitely want to get this book. I'm I'm going to I'm going to throw it out right now. I'm getting the vibes. I'm getting the vibes that you need to pick this up. This looks like a fun one. I'm I'm glad that we're doing this one. Okay, so maybe toy designs that he did. Like storyboards. I didn't remember, I don't remember this at all. It's funny. Storyboards in these books a lot of times weren't super appealing to me. I have another Atomo book that I'm going to bust out that that people may not have seen. Um, I'll, I'll just leave it at that for right now, but uh, those storyboards are really cool. Like I actually like those a lot, but um, yeah, sometimes storyboards in these books and kind of gloss over them. Some of the design stuff in the middle, uh, character designs too, I'm, I'm not always as interested in. It depends. It depends on the execution. 
down. Oh, yeah, this is cool. Kind of got a little bit of a Mobius feel. It's interesting how artists really own things, you know, where, like, this this type of thing will always probably be considered a Mobius-like drawing. Um, I think it's cool, sometimes unfortunate, too, because if you want to explore something, you know, maybe you don't want it compared to another artist. Maybe it really is kind of coming from a pretty sincere and honest place, but, um, you know, people will compare your work. I had said that in another video. People, will, you know, you can't really control what people will associate your work with. So, it, it, honestly, there's really no point in even worrying about it. And just do your thing. Be true to yourself. And, uh, you know, say be honest with your influences. If, if someone influenced a piece or... What happens for me, and, and maybe you guys will feel this too, is like I was drawing on the computer yesterday and I drew a character. I'm working on some original character designs right now and I drew a character. I really liked it, but it looked a lot like a Jay Lee drawing. But I had literally zero... J. Lee thoughts in my mind when I did it. So then you question yourself, okay, so should I keep this? Is this something that I would use? Or do you avoid it because it looks like someone else? So let me know in the comments below what you guys think about stuff like that. When you, you had no thought of an artist and you draw something and then it reminds you of them, do you go with it or do you not? I mean, as an example, with my black drawings, not that um, uh, like the first two that I did looked a little too much like Mignola to me as I was feeling out the style um, but uh, you know I moved past it and kind of came up with a, my own thing but wasn't really trying to do Mignola but what happens is if you if you you know if you do, you do certain things it will remind people of stuff and then they have to make the decision of do you keep it or not this is really nice. Yeah, I like his colors. I like the application of it. It's interesting because I'm trying, like, this looks... I'm looking at through the phone, but... I'm assuming this is digital color, but some of it looks traditional. I'd be curious to see his original artboards. What's, what's uh, you know, traditionally drawn and what's what's digital pretty neat but yeah you can see it's like a lot of this is just this guy riffing and it, it looks pretty awesome okay so we're 13 minutes in I'm gonna start to hustle just a little bit because I'm gonna try to keep this video under 30 minutes or it'll my camera will cut out at like 32 so oh yeah these are kind of cool yeah today's gonna be a fun day for me I'm uh, finishing inking a book, I have one page left, I'm going to knock that out, it's not a super hard page, so I should be able to do it in a few hours, I'm going to clean my office while I'm actually inking, so I'll ink for like 30 minutes, and then clean for like 20 minutes, and I, I brought in some new books that are kind of like, I think, fitting kind of more my direction right now, as I've drawn more, I kind of like, I start to dial in what, what I think might be helpful for me, so I, I try to surround myself, you know, I have like limited, um, book space in my office and so uh, when I know what I'm doing I try to like kind of bring in bring in the books that that will relate to my direction granted odds are I won't look at any of them but it's nice to have them in here just in case you know where you're like oh man I want to check out da 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 I can't even tell you what some of them are I grabbed a bunch of like peanuts um I grabbed uh, this Dr. Seuss collection I grabbed uh, what was it? Oh, Calvin and Hobbes. Not, like, like I'm not going full cartoonist mode, but, um, there's some really, really good stuff in all those books. They all have really good inking, too, actually. Um, you know, but, again, I kind of always pair inking up with drawing, so I, I don't separate the two that much, but to me, there's just, there's an energy to the way that they draw, and the finished drawings are generally inked, so, um, I like it. But yeah, all three of those guys are really, really good. It was interesting. I was watching the Crumb documentary last night while I was working, and that uh, guy's really good too. Robert Crumb, trippy, trippy family. <laughs> That's like an understatement of the year. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The if you haven't seen Crumb, it's, it's definitely worth checking out. And 
and uh, he does draw his ass off. It's it's pretty pretty interesting his whole thing. That's funny. Yeah, a lot of this stuff just feels like very kind of personal fun time, like a guy that maybe works like a day job and then just has a little bit of time to like throw in some drawings. Um, there's some pretty serious stuff in here too. This is really cool. Anytime you put a ton of detail, people will go, that's cool. Looks a little Ralph Steadman-ish. <laughs> oh man, I remember this. Yeah, this is cool. I'm glad we're doing this. These, these are so fun. And such a great excuse to check out these books. And then share them. And then hopefully hopefully get the artist's name out there, you know. And then more people are checking out his stuff. I think it's a win for everyone. We get to see cool stuff. He might get some sales. Um, you know, and it just it brings in light. Man, that's really nice. Very, very cure, very cure, very cure. You know, someone was asking me about black and white art. I mean, here's a good example of a black and white piece that actually has a very nice warm quality to it. And it's not a ton of detail, but, you know, you've got black, white, and then a little bit of wash, um, like washy uh, gray ink on it. It's perfect, you know? And that looks like a grayscale scan. I'm not seeing any color in there. It's like, yeah, that's grayscale. Um, that looks good to me, you know? I'm not saying that, like, like you know, that face is, like, the best face ever. But in terms of, like, does black and white art look dynamic and have, you know, a level of depth and stuff, I, I would say, yes, yeah, something like that does. These two, you know? That's so what I was saying is the, um, a lot of, of this type of art really looks good in black and white. There's no two ways about it, you know? It's, it works. So yeah, you can do a black and white comic book's pretty badass. You just gotta, you gotta pick your, your sort of mediums and approaches and stuff like that. And uh, you know, in a weird way, color might kind of wreck, wreck the stuff. It's possible, you know? The more that a reader or viewer of your art can add to it, there's something very interactive about that, where an artist puts down a piece of art and you're able to look at it and contribute. It's a special thing. Storyboard, very cool, very cool. Again, just these look like little things that he does on the side, you know? He's like, I just worked all day. I wanna draw something. Do a little something something. Oh look, they're so cute. It's just like, whoa. Yeah, he gets a real like kind of washy watery colory thing with his work. It's really interesting. Literally no idea what uh how that's colored. It looks digital, but it like may it could be painter. Maybe he's using painter. It's possible. Stuff. Oh yeah, this character was cool. I'm, I always liked her. Good stuff, Maynard. Dun dun dun. This is cool. Nice piece. Nice, nice, nice. Nice drawing. Ah, here's a little atom. Yeah, nice attention to detail. It's good stuff. Boy, this book is big. These open that books, they take a while. You have to have a strong arm to hold the phone for the whole video. I was worried this book wouldn't stay open. Actually, that was my kind of one of my biggest concerns. It's a funny little piece. 
yeah, some of these books, um, you know, they don't stay open real well, so it uh, can be problematic. Yeah, hopefully this is getting people juiced to draw, you know. That's the point. See some cool art. Kicks you in the ass a little bit. Scares you. Inspires you. Shakes you to your core. Then you get on with it. Pick yourself up. And you get down to business. So yeah, Koji Morimoto. I have no idea who the publisher is. Let me see if it says on the side of the book here real quick. They call it Orange Koji Morimoto Scrapbook, but it doesn't say the publisher. Some photos. We'll just go through these pretty quick. Pretty trippy clothes. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I've been having a lot of really, really cool ideas for stuff that I want to do. Um, so, uh, look for some really, really fun merch and stuff like that from me coming up. I'm actually going to get pretty, um, pretty experimental and fairly aggressive with actually, you know, putting out some tangible product that you guys can pick up. And not necessarily you, just on YouTube, um, but. In general, if you if you're a fan of my art or, or interested in what I'm moving into, um, yeah, I'm gonna try to offer maybe like twice a month opportunities to buy new things that I'm gonna be offering and uh, really kind of focus on um, you know getting getting more stuff out there for people um, besides just you know like a monthly comic or whatever it is you know. I just have too many ideas. I I need to do them, so I'm doing them. And, uh, yeah, I'm actually, I'm pretty much positive that I'm going to create a second Instagram account for myself. So I'll talk about that more in like the journey videos, but, um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to keep the Richard friend one and then I'm going to have at least one or two other Instagram accounts that are going to focus on very specific, uh, projects that I'm working on. Um, and the Richard Friend one will kind of cover a little bit of everything. I mean, it's, um, you know, that will be probably the most personal one. And then, like I said, I'll have a couple that are just 100% art focused and not so much shared art. Again, it's it's always tricky when you're an inker because, you know, like I was saying on Instagram, I was going to share some old stuff. That's really cool. Um, so I've been posting like some Finch stuff and just, you know, like raw scans off of uh, my original boards and stuff like that that I had. But, um, yeah, I want to channel the, or, uh, uh, one Instagram that's 100% devoted to like pro like project specific, which I think will be really fun for people because then you can go there and always see new stuff that relates to that specific thing and it won't be like different things. Okay, so yeah, these are like a lot of very, very simple sketches. But you know, this, this the kind of stuff should encourage you to not be, in, you know, uh, timid about drawing, you know, I mean, like, not everything that this guy does is, like, the most amazing thing ever, um, you know, these are still nice, but you know what I mean, like, it, it shows creativity and still looks spontaneous, they don't look like they take, like, hundreds of hours, and, um, you know, I think it's important, um, to, to realize that, 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 you know, sometimes we see artists and, like, everything that they're showing are these, these very, very, crazy detailed very time consuming pieces or you know very finished art um but you know most of these guys if they sketch it will reveal things in their work that that maybe they they labor over more um to do the finished pieces you know i always say that like if you want to see how good a penciler really is check out their con sketches or anyone's con sketches for that matter and you can really tell like how well they how well they really know what they're doing um, because when you're under the gun and you have to draw something quickly um, Jim Lee being a great example Jim's quality really doesn't like shift too much because he's 
got it so ingrained in his head. And so I can always tell like when people are trying to sell uh, fake Jim Lee sketches because there's a confidence that Jim has in his work that is just so apparent that you could literally, you know, he could be running to a plane at, you know, like a, like to catch a plane in an airport and give you like a two minute doodle while he's running <laughs> through the terminal. And it would still like have a level of authority, um, you know, so that's why I like when people have like these shaky, shaky, fake, fake Jim Lee pieces. It's just, it's so obvious. So obvious. Same with Campbell. I mean, there's a guy I think that just recently it was on eBay trying to sell some fake sketches and uh, just, just, you know, I could tell right away that they weren't, they weren't real. Hopefully uh, other people are able to spot it too. Um, I think people are trying to shut down the auctions. I just, I barely caught wind of it. It's cool. Like, I like these. Just nice little simple sketches. This is important stuff to do, you know. Work on this and uh, it'll, it'll benefit you, you know. I've really, really um, noticed a big improvement in um, my uh, drawings from, from just sketching out of my head a ton. Uh, these are sideways. I'm just going to skip these. They're cool, but I mean, you can kind of turn your head and see them, but I want to flip the book. Here, might as well. So they're pretty nice. It's funny when I. It's hard to turn the pages with this freaking band aid on my hand. Oh, there's one more in here. Um, yeah, this is some of my favorite stuff that he does. I think that these are the most interesting to me is these kind of like um, panoramic sort of shots that he does. That there's a real like motion and kind of energy to them. This looks like a little model or something. It's pretty cool. So good lighting studies. If you can put together like little little uh, dioramas and stuff like that, and then you know try to like draw from them, you can light them and um, you know get get some practice. But really draw it. Don't don't trace it or do some sort of like cheat. Um, you'll get more out of it by sitting and really kind of trying to work out the the nuts and bolts of it. It's, you know, it's cool. Yeah. Oh my God. I have so many ideas. So many things that I want to work on. Time. You just don't want to waste it. That's the thing, is you can get a lot done, but you cannot, you can't waste time. So. Time is your friend, but it's also your enemy. <laughs> was kind of funny speaking of time yesterday when I was working like I, I knew that I could get a piece done in like say like five hours and it ended up probably taking me six hours maybe six and a half and and part of it was I was screwing around while I was working not a lot but you know I was like I'd hop on YouTube and I was trying to find something to, to watch or listen to and I was looking for little distractions because it was, it was kind of a hard page and so in my concentration, you know, I would I would focus real good for like 45 minutes, and then I would just feel like I needed a break, which is fine. But but you know, at the end of the day, I knew I could have been done earlier. I could have been done at two, and it ended up getting done at like 3:30. So shame on me. But at least I'm honest about it. And and oh yeah, so there's some photos of him. This was the stuff that kind of got me worried about him because it sort of looked like maybe this guy partied hard. <laughs> Sounds funny to say, but yeah, I got the impression that maybe like like he might have been like kind of like wild like a wild guy you know and uh sometimes those wild artists they're real talented and they're real creative but can bite you on the ass if you're like drinking too much or partying too much you know you lose sight of, of what what all the hard work and stuff you put in wow, this is really interesting yeah so there's i wonder if robert valley was influenced by this guy or vice versa or if it's just a coincidence because some of this stuff does remind me of it and even the palette and stuff like that is similar. wonder if, if they know each other's work. If it's just a coincidence. But yeah, you know, the thing is, is look, if you drift one day and you're aware of it and you know that like, hey, you know what, I actually, I if I would have focused a bit more, I could have got through my day quicker. Um, just check yourself the next time that you catch yourself doing it. I mean, that's the thing is, it's just don't let it be a habit, you know. You want to get through your day to get to your work as quick as possible. And I know it's not 
completely doable if you have to actually be at a job or at school certain hours of the day but when you come home if you have homework things like that just get it done get it done so you can get down to business and the business is drawing drawing your own stuff getting better at your art focusing in on what you want to do hopefully books like this give you a lot of um, food for thought some inspiration oh, I always like these yeah see again it's that these bigger shots that he gives are really really good they've, they've got a lot of story to them even though they're they're pretty um, suggest suggest you know like they kind of suggest it more my arm is killing me yeah it's a, it's a little bit of a Jamie Hewlett vibe I would love like a new Jamie Hewlett art book they should try to get something together it would be really cool I have the gorillas one somewhere but I should bust that out I have that actually would would fit into and open that book um, the gorillas book I have not looked at in probably eight or nine years <laughs> so it fits it fits the uh, criteria for these all right so we're at 30 minutes I need to hustle all right we're gonna do this fast because I don't want to make this two videos thank you all for tuning in stay tuned I'm just gonna ride this thing into the sunset but we're gonna try to get through the end of the book as fast as possible but um yeah, thank you for tuning in. Koji Morimoto, Orange, Scrapbook. And, uh, you know, if you like it, seek it out and try to get it. And um, I think you'll enjoy it. If you enjoyed what you saw thus far, imagine being able to look at it longer and, you know, really just, you know, pour over it. This guy's definitely got a very distinct style. I mean, it's like, I, I, I think that there's things that are similar to other, you know, Japanese designers and stuff like that. But um, he's good. He's got enough going on color-wise that it's, that it's distinct. Okay, this thing's going to shut off any second, so... Yeah, thank you for tuning in, and I hope you liked it. This book is actually getting hard to, uh, yeah, these are really cool. And you may be able to Google them and actually find, like, some images that you can save, too, which would be nice. So, all right. I will talk to you all later. I'll be back in a day or two with a journey video. It may... It may be next week. I'm not sure. I'm like I said. I've got a lot. I got a lot. I'm working on right now, and I want to stay focused. So that's cool. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, I'll talk to you later. I'm gonna turn it off. So I have a feeling it's going to just start another video. Okay, have a good one. I'll talk to you.